Hello, hello. Uh, welcome to World Plan Day. My name is Eric Andre, and uh, I'm going to talk about testing your plum code base using PyTest. Before that, I would like to thank everyone involved in World Plan Day. This video is being uh, uh, recorded in Mexico. So we have talks from many different places because this is a global community. And I'm not going to do it in Spanish and uh, to avoid creating diplomatic problems with the Mexican government. So I'll do it in bad English. First thing is Plum loves tests. Since a really, really long time ago, we had uh, testing back in 2002. It was committed by a good friend of mine, uh, Tidney da Silva, also from Brazil. And back in 2002, it's a long, long time. Remember, I, I really like that time Brazil had soccer, we had hope and so on and so forth. But nowadays we do not have soccer. We forget about this. And uh, since then, the Python testing uh, uh, landscape changed a lot. We started with something called unit test. That's basically a port of uh, JUnit to Python. It was done a long time ago because it seemed like the right way. So unit test brings all the verbosity we love in Java to, to, to Python. And uh, after that, someone said, oh, unit test that's part of the standard library is not cool enough. Let's create unit test two. And then what did we do? We moved to unit test two. So for a short period of time, if you look at some add-ons, you had unit import, uh, import unit test two as unit test. And that was it. And we have many other things to test uh, our base. We have Robert Framework. That's a, a really nice solution developed a long time ago by Nokia, I think. And uh, it helps you with automation to write better tests. I really like the fact that Robot Framework allowed people to write tests in plain language, like Portuguese or English. I had a project. Uh, 10 years ago, we used that extensively. We used Selenium to control browsers, and it was painful. Everything that you use to control browsers is painful. These days, we have Cypress for the Voto, and we are discussing using something else than framework like play, uh, Playwright. And I can tell you, lots have evolved. And we have something else in here. Testing clone is cool. And we need to keep you for Kada happy. Hi, you. And uh, we have more than 20 years of tests. It's tests on top of tests and top of more. We have hundreds of packages. And we test these hundreds of packages against Python, uh, Plone 5.2, Plone 6, also Python 3, 3.11, 3.12, and probably 3.13. And we also use GitHub Actions for small things. We use Jenkins, jenkins.plone.org. That's the, 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 one of the offsprings of you and other people. And I thank you for your service. And we have now pre-commit and Mr. Roboto and bunch of other stuff that you need to know. And now we also have Plone Meta. We have many, many things. But um, I'm going to suggest something else. We add something else in here. Instead of using unit test, we do like everybody else, all the cool kids in the Python world are doing and use PyTest. And Ishliebe PyTest. I've been working uh, with PyTest for around 10 years. Most, I start working on other projects. I develop projects on uh, some startups and PyTest, it's fun. And by the way, I forgot to, to mention there's something else, some other framework called Nose that are good friends of Pyramid and the Pylons project uh, that are here represented by CV uh, Almighty Purse. But honestly, I compare all of them and PyTest is the one that makes things fun. It brings a bit of magic. At first, you, are, you get confused, I know, but it's simple. You write less boilerplate to test stuff in. You can test more with the same amount of code. 
And uh, it works with the concept of dependency injection. It's kind of magical because all of a sudden you say, oh, in this test in here, I want a portal. And then a portal object magically appears. Trust, it works, it's good. And also brings a large ecosystem of plugins, meaning, oh, I want to test something that requires me to start a Docker container to run Keycloak or Listmonk or put the name of the backend or solution you need to test your integration. There are plugins to that and a few lines of code to configure it and run it. And it also supports running your old unit tests. So it's possible for us to simply wrap the existing tests with PyTest. I say that that's a good solution for you, start, for you to start, but I do not recommend. I recommend you to go jump right in. It, this is an example of testing the same thing using unit test and PyTest. And honestly, less is more. It's really easy to, to start testing. There are some things I want to, to say, how we test stuff in here and things we can improve. And David Glick is here with us. You don't see him, but he's here. And uh, I'm pretty sure we are going to pay him uh, some beers and he's going to implement for us. But in the general idea is, Clone loves PyTest. We already have support to, to PyTest. It's called PyTest-Plone. And then you ask, why PyTest-Plone? Because that's the convention for PyTest plugins. That's the way the PyTest community recommends you to write, uh, give your uh, naming uh, for your plugin. It's built on top, uh, on top of something else called GoSap PyTest Layer that was developed by our good friends at GoSap. It provides you with some basic fix, uh, fixtures and helpers to get started writing backend tests for Plone. And uh, it's already the default implementation when you create a new project using Cookie Cutter Plone Starter. It's already the default implementation when you create a new project, a new add on with Cookie Cutter Plone, and when you create a new Plone distribution. So it's already there. The support. It's there, some example code is there. And uh, it's really beautiful, this slide with two colors is just to make sure everyone is happy with this. But we have lots of things that are already tested with uh, PyTest. Plone distribution that we're going to have some talks about it during this uh, World Plone Day. And we are here in Mexico during the Ajolote Sprint, and we are working on that. Uh, Kit Concept Botolite Team, Collective Plone Internet, Collective Mastodon, and Collective Blue Sky. Because, come on, you have your own clone website. You want to publish. Every time you post a new blog post, a news item, you want to push for to Blue Sky and Mastodon to avoid having to do that manually. Okay, check these add-ons. Maybe a new talk is going to appear for World Plone Day about them because I really love them. Uh, Kit Concept Solar, Content Rules, Lack, uh, Collective Person, Collective uh, Case Study, Past Plugins, Member Property to Group, and so on and so forth. And as the, the goal in here is to keep a small presentation and not bore you to death, I want to show you the code. But instead of showing you the code, I'm going to point you. First thing is go to a new cookie cutter project, any project, the backend code is going to be tested like that. I strongly recommend you take a look at Collective Mastodon because Collective Mastodon adds a bunch of complexity uh, to PyTest because I'm testing that every time I go and uh, create a content rule that say every time I create a news item or I post a new, I add a new image to clone, I'm going to post this to Mastodon. So in order, to avoid having to have a full blow Mastodon instancing running for the test, there's a bunch of examples how you can mock the responses coming from Mastodon. So it's a good example for you. But 
there are cases that you need to see the whole thing working. And we have Kit Concept Solar. Kit, Con Kit Concept Solar implements the has a Docker uh, compose scenario where when you start your test, it's going to spin up a new solar instance with the right configuration. It's going to run every single possible test and then it shut down everything to make sure it's working. And there's another one that uh, we developed uh, over a key concept a few weeks ago. It's called Pass Plugins Key Cloak Groups. Key Cloak is an identity management system. It's really powerful and it's really enterprise. It's the perfect match for your CMS clone, the perfect CMS for the enterprise. And uh, we wanted to make sure that the groups you have on Keycloak, no matter where they come from, if from LDAP, from, uh, 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 I don't know, LDAP, Active Directory, Google Groups, and whatever, uh, Google Workspace or whatever, these names appear on your clone site when you need to give permissions. And you basically can say, the person that's part of the faculty uh, of this university or this uh, institute can uh, have the right, uh, have the permission to write new content on this area. And to do that, we have a really complex uh, configuration of key cloak that when you start to run the test, it spins up a new key cloak instance, including Postgres, create all the groups and data there, run the test, make sure the whole flow works, and then shut down. Also, if you have time and curiosity, go, for, go also for past plugins OIDC. That implements the other part of this, that's the authentication uh, workflow, uh, authentication flow for uh, OpenID Connect. And we also have collective.blog. That's a product we develop at uh, Kit Concept that's going to be used on uh, a new fancy clone distribution for personal websites. More about that this week. And uh, it also has a bunch of tests and have the concept of, uh, you can explore the concept of parametrization. So you have a few lines of tests and then you say, please, if I use this value, what's the return? If I use this value, what's the return? So you write a piece of test, uh, uh, like three, four lines of test. That's already an improvement uh, over a unit test. But even more, you can uh, get that and multiplex into hundreds of different possible tests. You can test uh, every possible variation of one test. You write the code once and then you go all the way. The message here is, please, please move from unit test to pi test. And uh, a volunteer over this course to take a look at your code to see and help you how to, to do this. One important thing before we, we go into our commercial breaks, I want to invite you to take a look at these plugins, these add-ons we have for Plon, and see if there's something that you need to test that's not already documented there. We are going, uh, currently we have in training.clone.org a training for writing tests. I plan over a uh, summer in the Northern Hemisphere to rewrite that to use PyTest and add PyTest examples. So that's it for the presentation. Please follow me in all those cool social networks. As my good friend uh, Miko Otama would say, please do not leave me alone. And if someone from the audience here has any questions, please say something now so I can uh, answer live questions. So you at the back, can someone pass the microphone to him? Okay. Yeah, I know. Please, no, this one. Yeah, the other one I haven't seen. Did you raise your hand as well? No, not yet. So, 
Uh, I'm I'm David Glick. I've been using PyTest to to test Plone now, and I've used PyTest to test other things. I like PyTest. It's challenging to use with Plone. Uh, if you're paying close attention and you want to make sure that your tests are running as fast as possible, because with SOAP, it was easy to create a layer that set things up, set a bunch of things up once, and then you can run many tests with that setup, and then you tear it down. Yep. And the the PyTest clone is based on uh, GoSet.PyTest layer, which lets us use these layers with PyTest. That's great. Uh, but if I'm trying to configure my tests using PyTest fixtures and I get the portal, that portal is going to end up getting set up multiple times depending on how I configure the tests. So I'm not sure where I'm going with this because I didn't actually raise my hand, but you know, there's some more work to do. Yeah, it's it's important. It was a good point you raised because this is something that we've been discussing. Uh, GoSet PyTest layer is a really great bridge between the old world and the new world. And uh, maybe at some point we are going to replace it with something entirely new, remove PyTest, uh, uh, the GoSet uh, uh, plugin, and simply implement everything with directly into PyTest Plone. One of the benefits of using PyTest Plone now is the fact that we are actually talking about a facade pattern because, oh, I want a portal. The portal is going to be there. How we are creating the portal, the inner implementation might change, may change, but the portal is going to be there. The same thing with the other fixtures. We have fixtures in uh, PyTest Plone to basically check, tell me if uh, the, the add-on is, is installed or not, or not. And how do I uninstall? It's quite easy to get started. And the idea is to remove as much from the old uh, testing.py that you all had in your project and add to the, to the pictures on PyTest clone. Uh, so that's it. And we also want volunteers to help us to debug and to make uh, speed uh, uh, performance improvements to PyTest Plone. So we are here to, to help. So if there are no other questions, I strongly uh, advise you and beg you, please click on the, the little bell to receive a notification and please subscribe to the Ad Plone CMS YouTube channel. Thank you all and hope you have a great Word Plone day. Bye bye.